Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our epistle lesson, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, He that is down need fear no fall, he that is low no pride. He that is humble ever shall have God to be his guide. I am content with what I have, little be it or much. And Lord, contentment still I crave, because thou savest such. This was a poem in John Bunyan's famous book, The Pilgrim's Progress. Perhaps you've read it. Contentment is what we're talking about today. Contentment. It's one of those things that we struggle with. At least I do. You see, it just doesn't come natural to, the hum to humans. I mean, we want more, do we not? We want more money. How many of us here this morning want more money? We want more recognition. Do we not want more appreciation, more acknowledgement of the, of the work that we do? More house. Have you ever dreamed about living in one of those mansions in Hollywood? More car. A shiny, new, red Lamborghini would look nice in my driveway. How many of us don't want more out of life? Being content just does not sound possible. Yet here is St. Paul in our text. He sounds so positive. He sounds so confident. We might be led to think that Paul was living in the lap of luxury. It might surprise some of us that at the time of this writing, Paul was probably facing a death sentence, stripped of everything, even possibly his life. Yet in spite of his circumstances, Paul was able to find contentment and peace. What was Paul's little secret? Well, that's the topic that we will discover today as we examine how to find true contentment. The truth be told, Paul's little secret is not really a secret at all. At least it shouldn't be. You see, Paul knew that in Jesus, and only in Jesus, can we find enough contentment and peace to rise beyond our possessions and circumstances and acknowledge the good deeds of those who responded to the call of faith. It is so easy to point out the bad in people. We identify easily the things done wrong by our friends, by our children, by our spouses, by our co-workers, and by our fellow Christians at, at church. But Paul, in our text, begins to point out the good things done by the Philippian church, and, thank, and he thanks them for their support and their gifts. He could have easily dwelt on the time frame when he had not heard from them and raised the question, where were you in my time of need? Instead, Paul chooses to encourage the church and to thank them for their support of him and of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, they might not have done all that they had the ability to do. But Paul thanks them for putting some actions to go with their words of faith. And actions are important. I know we don't like to talk about actions that much as Lutherans, but you can't escape it. The Bible says that our actions, our deeds are important. James chapter 2, if any of you says to him, 
Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. The words of the text, of our text, bring a firm reminder that God has indeed supplied our needs through Jesus Christ. And there are countless verses in scripture to back this up. Take Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, just a, a few verses after our text. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Or how about Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7? In him you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. And then there's Titus chapter 3 verse 5. He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. You see, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. Therefore, our peace of mind, our contentment, and our joy can only be found in that which is outside of ourselves. It can only be found in God. That is, after all, why Jesus died. So that you might have rest in him. He died so that you might be at peace in him. He died so that no matter what circumstances or situations you find yourself in, he will provide for all your needs. That's the little secret that Paul had learned. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, Paul says, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. And in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now Paul's words here have a twofold acknowledgement. The first is that he was not always able to be content. It was something that he had to learn. And second, that when he received Christ, he came to understand that he would never be in want for anything else. For St. Paul, nothing else could ever compare to the gift of God in Jesus Christ. The more he learned about Jesus, the more peace, the more contentment, and the more joy he gained out of life. Paul learned what all of us here this morning can learn. That true joy is found nowhere. True joy is found nowhere but Jesus Christ. Earthly happiness is based on earthly and material things. And it lasts but a moment. In fact... That's why Paul begins our text by saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. Notice he doesn't say, Rejoice in yourselves or rejoice in your material things, but rejoice in the Lord always. Again, Paul states, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength, not my power or your power or anyone else's power, only through Christ. The power of Christ has saved us, and it is still working in our lives to this very day, providing peace in the midst of storms and contentment in the midst of turbulence. It is a sanctifying and cleansing reality, this strength of Christ. And it continues until we enter by faith into the kingdom of heaven. In the Greek, the words that Paul uses gives me strength in verse 13. Denote a present and continued act. In other words... 
Paul is saying, through Christ, who is strengthening me and continually strengthens me, I am, I am able to act in everything. You see, God's grace is not a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Rather, His grace is a gift to you each and every day of your life. So there you have it. Jesus Christ is Paul's little secret to being content. And you know what? It is your secret to contentment as well. Knowing that he has died for you and that he has risen again for you and that he loves you beyond words can say. Our society is always clamoring for more. More money, more house, more car, more whatever. Rather than these material things that are here today and gone tomorrow, wouldn't it be refreshing to hear people in our society clamoring for more Jesus? Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, you can be that person through the Holy Spirit who is already at work in you. You can demand more Jesus in your life and in the lives of those you love. Hear the word. Receive God's sacraments. And you, like St. Paul, will know the secret of being content in every situation. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.